Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace and today we are in Trail Makers. This is a video that I'm going to be showing you how to make a self-stabilizing flyer. You'll also learn a lot about logic. As you can see I'm in a 36 mile an hour wind and I'm not touching anything and this flyer is basically staying put on its own uh, fighting against the wind for me. I can move the aircraft and once I stop pressing anything it will arrest its motion. I'll do some yaw and when I stop pressing it will eventually right itself. Here we go. I can go up and it will stay basically in place. It drifts very slowly down. If I'm rocking it will compensate for that and eventually stop the rocking. It also has sensors on the bottom to keep it at a certain altitude and off of the ground. So it basically acts like a hovercraft when it's near uh, the ground or going over water. So it uses a lot of logic stuff, but I'm going to take it step by step uh, to make it easy. I will have this flyer on the workshop so you can study it. There'll be a link in the description. I want to give a shout out to that Dom guy. He makes some incredible builds in trail makers and has some excellent how-to videos. I also found a logic video from Impossibum Plays was very helpful so I'll link to that as well in the description. I'll be using this version of the flyer which has all the aerodynamic stuff stripped away so it'll be easier to see things and I'll have a link to this one on the workshop as well. The first thing I want to point out are these helicopter engines here, here, and on the bottom here. I've got some on the top and these are for general stabilization. So I'll demonstrate what that's about. We're gonna take these helicopter engines and put one here and then copy that there and then we'll stick one here this one is the one that has connections on the top and the bottom and then we'll do copy over here and then we can copy that over here and move that and then copy it over here so s and w are going to these so let's just see if i build this and I hit S. Yes, so they're going in opposite directions. The one on top is spinning this way. The one on the bottom is spinning the opposite way. You can see the ones on the sides are also spinning opposite of each other. And so that is your general stabilization. And I got this trick from that Dom guy. So if I bring in that same flyer I had before, but I'm missing the stabilizers along the sides, and I try to go, let's get it rocking a little bit like this, and then I'll stop, and you can see it continues to rock quite a bit, and it takes a long time to stabilize. Whereas if I have this, this one that has those stabilizers along, and let me get it rocking in the same way, okay, and now I'll stop, and you can see that it stabilizes a lot more quickly. So one of the things I need to do is to counter the speed. So this is a speed sensor, and this is just demonstrating how the speed sensor works. So one of these speed sensors is going to one light and the other one's going to the other. So if I spin this around, you can see one of the lights is it's detecting speed in one direction, and I spin it the other way, and that's detecting speed in the opposite direction. In this example, I can spin it around, but then I can stop pressing any buttons and it will stop the rotation. I don't want it to try to counter the speed if I'm trying to go in that direction. In other words, if I'm trying to turn to the right, I don't want the stabilization to be fighting me when I'm trying to turn to the right. So I only want the stabilization to work if I'm not pressing the button to go to the right. So how do we accomplish that? So in some games, including Scrap Mechanic, you would use a knot gate. So if I'm trying to turn to the right, I want that to go to the thruster. That's giving me clockwise thrust. And if the speed sensor is detecting counterclockwise motion, I also want clockwise thrust. But I only want that if I'm not trying to turn to the left. So if I'm trying to turn to the left, I don't want clockwise thrust, so I need both of these things to be true in order to provide thrust. I'm not trying to turn to the left, and it's detecting counterclockwise speed. Unfortunately, this game does not have a knot gate, so we have to create a knot gate, 
And the way we do that is with an XOR gate that has something that is always on going to the XOR gate. The way to accomplish that is with a distance sensor and you place the distance sensor so that it's always detecting something in front of it. So here is the distance sensor and I've got that pointing straight down and it is going you can see to this XOR logic gate. So you can toggle this uh, if you want it to go there. Whatever you want it to go to, you toggle like that. The XOR gate has going to the left button and it's going to this AND logic gate. This speed sensor up here is detecting speed going around in this direction and that is set to speed of 0.1 and it's going to this AND logic gate as well. This AND logic gate is going to these two thrusters and this thruster is also taking the right arrow. So again looking at this we've got the left arrow going to the XOR, the distance sensor to the XOR, so this is becoming a knot. Those are both going to an AND along with the speed sensor and the AND going to the thruster as well as the right going to the thruster. This same logic scenario is going to play out with trying to prevent us from going down, trying to prevent us from going forward or to the right. Now one thing I wish the game had was I wish that when you click on configure it not only showed you where the signal was going to which is what this is but if there was some sort of indication of where signals are coming from and going to this maybe a blue dot or something uh, just because it, with complicated builds you might have four different items going into this AND gate for instance and it's easy to lose track of all the different items that are going into that AND logic gate or more likely an OR logic gate. I want to talk a little bit about general building techniques when it comes to flyers. If you're going to use gimbals, uh, you want those to be up high uh, and the weight to be below. You want your main thrust to be around the center of gravity or the center of mass. It would be nice if the devs provided us uh, some indication of where the center of mass is, perhaps after we save an item and then come, go back into build mode. But right now you have to guess at the center of mass. And what you could do is put your build on top of a pole with an unpowered hinge and then uh, see whether your creation falls forward or backwards or to the right or to the left uh, to try to figure out where the center of mass is. Another thing to be aware of is that there are some hotkeys that are not shown anywhere in the game, unfortunately, and they're not on this basic controls anywhere. Their little help videos don't show all of the hotkeys either. It would be nice if they showed all the hotkeys in their game, but they don't. I found them on their Discord. I'll leave a description of those hotkeys in the video description. One of those hotkeys, for instance, is instead of click to rotate and you can do like this, one of the annoying things is this rotation thing moves as this thing rotates, but you can hit Alt and use your arrow keys to rotate. So that's just one hotkey tip. So maybe I'll do another video sometime on the hotkeys and general building techniques. I use this example for rotation just as a training piece, but actually this is uh, rotating much too fast. So there is another way to do yaw. If you watch the helicopter stabilizers uh, below my seat, uh, when I turn one way, one of them stops. When I turn the other way, the other one stops. So if we look at this, this one is accepting the right arrow key and this one is accepting the left arrow key. These helicopter engines are always on. Here's my distance sensor facing inward and you'll see that this distance sensor is going to the stabilizer helicopter engines including these down here. It's also going to quite a few other things including here's an XOR logic gate. Here's another XOR logic gate it's also going to the steering hinges because I want these hinges to automatically go down a little bit when I turn it on. So you can see these hinges automatically fold because I want these to be at an angle. 
Oh, I got a little distracted. Back to the rotation. If the counterclockwise motion stops, but the clockwise motion keeps going, then the vehicle is going to turn counterclockwise. I should also note that I've got speed sensors going in opposite directions, uh, in opposite sides of the craft, and both of those are going to an AND gate in order to detect rotation. Because you'd have to detect speed going in two directions in order to say that there's rotation. So if we look at some of these thrusters, the yellow is the front of the plane, by the way. So here is W going to this mini thruster here and here, and S is going to these two mini thrusters. Uh, and then here's the thruster going to the left. You've got A, and there's A, and then this is D and D. And I've got more A and D here. These are just extra thrust. So here's a speed sensor that is detecting speed going forwards. And I've got that at 0.1 speed. That is going to this AND logic gate. I also have an XOR logic gate. This is basically a knot because I've got this distance sensor up here going to that XOR as well. So the XOR has the W going to it and the distance sensor. So it, it's saying if you're not pressing W, then go to this AND gate. So if there's positive speed going forward and you're not pressing W, then let's give you some thrust to these thrusters here and here to arrest your forward momentum. So we're gonna have a similar thing for going to the left, going to the right, uh, and going backwards. There's also a speed sensor pointing downwards. That's also at point one. You can see that is going to this and logic gate, and this and logic gate is going to all of these gimbals. So that's saying if we're getting speed going downwards, let's have some upward uh, momentum, some upward thrust. But there's also this XOR logic gate, which is using left control. That's how I go uh, down, is using left control. So if the left control is not being pressed, remember this is really a not gate, then we want that to go to the AND gate. So only if we have downward speed and we're not pressing left control do we want these thrusters to activate. To enable it to hover and not hit the ground, down here I've got two altitude sensors and two distance sensors in the corners. And if we look at this, uh, it's detecting an altitude of two and it's triggering below. You need to check that box and then the distance sensor is also detecting a distance of two. And then all four of these are going to this OR gate right here. And the OR gate then is going to the gimbal thrusters up here. So if any of these get a positive result, then the gimbal thrusters are gonna get some extra thrust. Now there is one issue which is that because I've set this as a distance of two, I'm not gonna be able to enter build mode. So you could uh, set this to a distance of one and then you'll still be able to enter build mode, but then you might hit the ground. What I've done to counteract that is I have an or logic gate accepting an O, but it's giving a negative output and the negative output is going to these gimbal thrusters. So I'll hit control and I'll hit B to build. Oh, it's letting me build. That's making a liar out of me, but usually uh, it doesn't allow me to build. So, but if I hit control and then you see it's not going all the way down, but if I hit control and I've got zero, now it goes all the way down to the ground. So then I'm able to build. So the last thing to talk about is arresting the rocking motion. So here is an angle sensor. So if I tilt this forward, you can see that it's detecting that it's at an angle and the light is coming on. And then if it's not leaning forward, then the light goes off. Pay attention to that upward arrow and where the blue is on that circle, like that. So this is the angle sensor for the backwards motion. This is the angle sensor for the uh, forwards tipping motion. 
Let's bring in a, a fresh angle sensor you could, so you can see what it starts off at. So here's how it would start. We would click on configure and if we want this to detect forward tipping then we don't want it detecting up here. We want it detecting uh, 90 degrees to the side and we want a greater amount of detection area. Now if I do 180 that's going to be too much. It'll wind up rocking back and forth like a perpetual pendulum. So we want this to be more like 170. No, I had it at I have it at 160. I think 170 was too much. In this case, I don't need to worry about a knot gate because I don't have any pitch or roll on my craft. So this is just going directly to these thrusters back here. Oh, I had that backwards. This is actually detecting uh, the angle going backwards. So it's this one over here, sorry, that detects the angle uh, if it's pitching forward. So this is going to these thrusters here to compensate for it uh, pitching forward. At first I had uh, connected the, these to gimbal jets and that was not working so I needed to use mini thrusters for this. And then hidden in here, if I take that away, that's going to disconnect this, but there's a sensor for detecting whether we have roll one way and then the other one is back here. So that's detecting roll in the other direction. By the way, a hot key for undoing what you just did is Z. And let's do Z again, and that replaces that. So that's all I have in how this thing works. Uh, check out the links in the description. Uh, post suggestions if you have them, and any other comments. I love to see comments. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell for notifications. Uh, I'm sure I'll do some more trail makers. I've got plenty of scrap mechanic stuff and some eclectic stuff on the channel if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.